This is Coach Tall Guy. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I'm going to continue with this series on how to coach positioning. Uh, we talked in my last video about using a cone line to help kids visually see which side of the field they're on. Today, I'm going to give you something you can do in your practices called shadow play. Shadow play is great for trying to teach positional play to kids. Uh, there's some visual components to this. There's a lot of moving to it. It's an opportunity for you as a coach to really adjust players so that they're in their right spot. And it also kind of helps players learn that like shifting, where do I go? When do I go forward? When do I go back? How do we move as a group? And you can also actually do this so that the repetition is pretty quick. So you're getting um, kids in very quickly so that they're not just sitting out the whole time, but it's a great way to help teach that positional play. Now for me as a coach, I love starting kind of with my defensive line and moving forward to my midfield line and forward line. So I'm going to dive right into shadow play, some of the setup you can do, how you can do this as a coach, and some of the things to talk about when you're coaching. So in this example right here, this is just how you're going to set up your field. So if you're starting with the defense, in this case, it's a 99 game, so we're playing with three in the back. I'm going to have a cone here, cone one. I'm going to label it cone two and cone three. You're going to notice this dash line is again that cone line to help the kids see the field split in half so it's a pretty simple setup so if you have those disc cones you can just set the ball on top of them if you have the taller cones just set it right beside but the important thing is that you let the players know what the number of the cone is so again cone one cone two cone three you're going to see how the cones um, are spread out we have a cone on each side of the field and then we have one in the middle and this is to kind of give the kids an idea of like well if the ball was on one side of the field where do we go if the ball is in the middle of the field where do we go if the ball is on the other side where do we go so moving on um so i'll give you guys in a, a situation here so as a coach i might yell out one all right and the kids have five seconds or less to quickly try to position themselves where they think they should go in this situation. So in this situation, I've called out ball one. This is pretty good, right? We have a player on the ball, which is great. We have our center back starting to move towards the ball, but not right on top of the teammate. Okay. They're giving that cover. And then we have our outside back shifting across to the middle cone line to give us that balance. So there's that nice little shift. And then from there, once they've shifted and I say freeze, I look, see how they're set up positionally, and then I'm going to make some coaching corrections. If everything's great, we just move on. If everything's not great, I kind of physically move the kids where they need to be, talk a little bit about distances, things of that nature. A lot of times you'll see this player, particularly in recreational soccer, will come across the cone line, and then this player will be too close, and we get that bunchy kind of feel, and that's something that you want to address as a coach. So the correct setup in that situation, right? We have pressure, we have cover, we have balance. Now notice in this situation, I have the balance here, okay? They're just basically right across from each other. And the reason for that is now my offside line is here. If I have this player too deep, it's gonna keep more players on side, give them more space. So from that there, I might then call out ball two and quickly the players have to position themselves and notice here, the center back had to put the pressure on the ball and the two outside backs drop off and become basically cover and balance. All right. And again, they're in a nice straight line here and we create that little kind of V shape, but we have the pressure and we have cover and balance with these two players. So again, it's just every time you call out that cone, the players are going to have to quickly shift and move into their position depending on where the ball is. This situation, I call out number three. All right. You can see how the player shifted and rotated. The outside back now gave pressure. Center back gave cover. The other outside back gave nice balance. And then from here, you can rotate these three players on and off. So you can make this pretty quick because, again, they're having to shift quickly. You're only giving them a few seconds to find their spot. And this is a great way to shadow play because there's no pressure. The ball's not moving. Okay. Okay. So it gives them an opportunity to really find their positional shape and for you as a coach to kind of adjust them as they start to pick up the activity you can call out the cones quicker you can even say something like cone one and as they're shifting to cone one you might then yell out cone two and then they've got to quickly shift again 
which mirrors uh, in a game, for instance, like maybe the opposing team is passing the ball back and forth, or maybe somebody's dribbling into a different space. So you, as they pick up the activity, you can call it those numbers much quicker, and then they have to shift. All right, now let's say you've done the back. Now you can add another line, okay? So in this situation, we've added the midfield line. We have our back line. We've moved the cones closer to midfield. And we just do the same thing, except now we're adding more players. So if I was to say in this situation, ball three, my outside midfielder is going to pressure the ball. My center midfielder is giving that cover. All right. My outside mid midfielder here is giving balance. And then our three defenders in the back are also giving us balance, but I'm moving them as well. And what I would really talk about with kids is I add extra players is the distances okay so many times in recreational soccer they just want to all go to the soccer ball so they they basically are on top of each other and that's where we get that bunching so the shadow play when you do this you can really address in this situation like hey guys are we too close are we too far and you can talk about those distances and one of the things i like to use with our defenders is hey defenders you really want to try to keep your midfielders in front of you midfielders more often than not you're going to want to stay in front of the defenders and then you just go to that same thing where you're just calling out different numbers the kids quickly have to shift and try to find their position as you can see here this is position two with a midfield so we have our center midfielder pressuring the ball we have our our cover here and then our three defenders become our balance all right notice how these this whole group is a little bit more compact all right because we're on defense we're not on offense right now so we want to get closer to the middle of the field without being all in the exact same space in this situation the ball just shifted over to cone one so our outside midfielder pressured center midfielder gives cover outside midfielders and defenders give that nice balance notice though how from here right in the above picture these players have shifted now towards the middle of the field when the ball's out wide, we're not overly concerned with this space anymore because in order for a kid to switch the ball, it's going to give our whole team time to shift and respond. And at the recreational level, it's very difficult for those outside midfielders to hit a ball all the way across the field accurately. In fact, I'd almost, as a defense, want to sort of bait them into trying to hit that ball so then we can pick it off as it comes across the middle of the field. And then if you want to add to it, you would just move these cones all the way back, put them in the attacking third, and then we can add our forward line into it and shift up. One of the things I would encourage you that we still see a lot in recreational soccer is like, let's say I had cone one right here. Everybody should be pushing down the field. That means getting our defenders up to midfield. I know that's a tough concept, but again, that's something that should happen. So to sum it up, this shadow play is very helpful for kids. It can be rapid. You can add more kids as you go down the field. Um, having them understand the different halves of the field, where the ball is, that's really going to help you uh, dictate how you're going to position them. And then it's your job as a coach to go in there and make those corrections uh, for those players as they're out of position. So the shadow play, again, I would use it. It's great because there's no pressure, all right? It allows the kids to kind of see things and it gives you as a coach some time to really make some corrections. And as the activity picks up, you can fly through this pretty quickly so that there's not a lot of downtime, so there's not too many kids sitting out. But it is important that all the kids learn positionally how to move. And then you have to remember that, you know, just because you did one shadow play session doesn't mean that, Kids are going to magically like on Saturday be in their positions the whole time. But this is a good thing that you can incorporate into your practice to help the kids kind of understand where they need to be in the field. And then defensively, you can dive into some of that pressure cover balance concept as well. And you can do the exact opposite with the shadow play and just say, hey, let's do it on the offensive side of the ball. Where do we want to go? All right. So if I if we had just won the ball, I mean, it's pretty much the same. OK, I would have my player here has got the ball. I would then shift my center back over a little bit and I would have my outside back starting to diagonal up the field because we're in attack. 
all right? And the reason they're diagonaling up the field towards the middle is because they're young, so they're not going to be able to spray that ball, switch it across the field. As we get older, I'd actually have this player stretch wider, all right, because we can now hit that ball. And, in, and again, on offense, we want to kind of stretch the field. The reason I have this center back, if we we're doing an offensive session coming behind the ball, is I want somebody in support. So if we don't have anything forward, we can play it back and then switch it out to the other side of the field. So you can use this shadow play concept as well when you're teaching the offensive positioning as well. All right. So take some time in your practices coming up, maybe find a day, do a little sh bit of shadow play. I think you'll be like, oh, that was kind of nice. Like I'm able to really position my kids. And then when they go through the repetitions, you'll start to see which kids are really kind of picking up that concept. And then hopefully you'll start seeing some of those seeds as they go into their scrimmages and their games and positionally, they'll start getting a little bit better. Well, thanks you guys. I hope you found this helpful. And this is Coach Tall Guy out.